Good morning, everyone. This is your IAO Tech Guy, and today I'm doing a uh, first-time video for me, and that's going to be a step-by-step -step video on how to download and take the uh, Zorin 9 OS Ultimate Edition uh, ISO file and put it onto a USB thumb drive. And I know some people were like, well, they want to put it on a DVD, but to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not into that. I don't Personally, I don't recommend it. I know some people may. And I'll give you a couple reasons why. DVDs, in my experience, work most of the time, but sometimes they could just be flat out sketchy. I've used DVDs in the past, you know, 10 years ago, not 8 years ago, because that's all you had. Now, with the proliferation of USB thumb drives, which are relatively inexpensive, I went to Target and I picked up an 8 gigabyte. Lexar thumb drive for under ten dollars, so they're really inexpensive to get, and I'd recommend that you uh that you put a um you use a thumb drive instead of burning it to a DVD one because it seems to be a bit it's more of a durable format than a, a DVD disc. When you're installing the operating system onto your computer, it uh what's the word I'm looking for? It goes faster. It goes faster than trying to read a DVD in a DVD drive. And plus, like I said, they're cheap. And as many of you probably already know, thumb drives are about the size of your thumb. They're extremely small. They're very portable. They do go bad like any other um, like any other medium, but they last longer than a DVD. You can take them anywhere, and they're more durable. So let's get started, and let's go through this step by step. So the first thing they're gonna you're gonna do is that when you get when you pay for uh, Zorin nine uh, oh, Zorin OS nine Ultimate. You're gonna um, you're gonna get an email after you pay for it, and they do have a free version which is called Zorin Core, and it doesn't come with the bells and whistles that Zorin 9 Ultimate comes with. And I have Zorin 9 Ultimate currently installed on my system, and you know there's a there's a couple of minor bumps, but overall it's been a very good OS. It's been very solid. It has a lot of stuff already installed, which is awesome. Um, some of it, most of it, I don't use or care for, but if I really if I really cared, I'd go in there and remove the programs that I don't use. So it's not a big deal. And honestly, the the cost for Zorn 9, Zorn OS 9 Ultimate is about 12 or 13 bucks American dollars. So for most people, and of course I know that some people are really super tight budgets. I've been there. They can't afford it. You can go ahead and install Zorn OS Core for free. So let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna you're gonna click this link right here. Control click and we're gonna click it and see what happens. Alright, there we go. We break off this tab and and you're gonna to go to the Zorn uh, 9 Ultimate page and you're gonna download it. And I'm not gonna download it because it's a 3.6 gigabyte uh, download and it's gonna take a while. Alright, so in your email that you get once you pay for uh once you pay for Zorn OS 9 Ultimate, you're gonna get an email with a link to download it. And so here's the page, you're gonna click download. That should be pretty straightforward. Save it to save it to your uh, computer. And generally, if you're using Windows or if you're using a uh, mainstream Linux distribution, it's going to go into your downloads folder. So there's what the web page looks like. And let's, you know, so you're going to download it. I'm not going to waste time downloading it because I already have it downloaded. We're going to go to the next step. Now, please bear with me. This is the first time I'm doing one of these videos. I haven't um, done this before, so if I screw up, I apologize. And I'm more than open to constructive criticism. So we did that. Now we're going to um, check the MD5 checksum. Which is very important because in the past when I was young and dumb. I didn't care about the MD5 checksum. And most of the time it was fine. But sometimes it came and bit me in the rear end. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this link right here. And this is a Word document. So you will click on it in your email. I'm just going to click on it. And... There's a download for it off of a uh, gtkapps.org. Okay, let's save it. And this is the first time I'm doing this because I, uh, all right, let me blow that up. This, is, this looks like some work. All right, tested on links. Right click and not, okay. Check hash. All right, so we're going to download it. All right, so it's a, it's a, um, it's a it looks like it's a shell script. So let's download that. And this shouldn't be a big download, as you see it is, and it's it's saved instantly. So 
I'm using Thunar right now. I need to get off my butt and um, make it the default Windows, uh, the default file manager for Zorin OS, because I'm a bigger fan of it than I am for um, Nautilus. So Zorin, I mean Thunar, which is I take off from Thor, the big hammers, the icon. Go to the downloads folder, and let me see where did I put where did I save that. We'll download it again. Click here. Cancel. Oh, it isn't downloads. There it is. All right. Close that. Sorry about that. Um, modified. There we go. And now we're going to extract it. So with Thunar, it's a matter of just going into extract a file, right click, and open with Archive Manager. We're going to extract it. And let's extract it. Show the files. Damn it. Okay, hash check is a folder. Alright, it's a shell script. If you're doing this in Linux, you're probably going to have to set it to... Okay, it's already um, allowed to run as a program. So we'll right click, execute, and see what we get. And we, oh, there we go. English. All right. Hash checker to begin installing next. Okay, agree. Now, where do they stick that at? Preferences, administration. Nope. Okay, where the Now, trying to find the application is going to be the GTK3 on the web mono. It's not in that folder. And we're playing whack-a-mole. So, this is the first time I'm doing this, uh, walking through this in Linux. I guess I should do another walkthrough in uh, Windows, but we'll see what happens and how I feel. Because right now I'm kind of like getting a little irritated that I can't find this stupid program. To check the friggin' uh, check the friggin' file. So, yeah, let's get back there. Okay. All right. So let's check to see if it's on the desktop. Playing whack a mole. We're done with that. Oh, there it is. Duh. I'm an idiot. Sorry. Alright, so we're going to check the MD5 checksum. So let's go and let's copy this. And go down and copy. Go back to the desktop. Hash checker. Choose a file to check. Downloads. And let's maximize this so you can all see this. And let's go to this file right here. Okay. MD5. All right, they got a bunch of other um, checksums to check with here too, which is actually pretty cool. All right, let this go. And this is the first time I'm doing it, so I'm learning as I'm learning some stuff as we go as well. Let's Google it. Oh, that was. Dumbass. Fuck. Pardon my language.
Oh, okay. All right. So I'm going to drag this back over to my other string because I have two monitors. And, well, actually, no, we're just going to do it like this. All right, so let me... And let's see, 4FC, 6.9C, 3.4, 2.8, C9, E9709, E9, 3.9, BFD, 3.890, A2, D, A4, 3. So the uh, MD5 checksums match up as you can see. And I hope you all can see this on the screencast. Like I said, first time doing it, so I'm a, kind of a noob. Uh, they... They look like they uh, match up to me, so we're going to get out of here, and we're going to continue on with the um, with the tutorial, so let's see, unmaximize. Alright, so we did that, the MD5 uh, checksums match up, we're going to now uh, extract the file, so for Linux we're going to go and install the P7 full package from the package manager, and we're just going to, come on, you son of a bitch, there we go. Copy, copy that, and we're going to go to the software center. Paste. There we go. Perfect. Oh, it's already installed. Awesome. Because I am running Zorn OS 9 Ultimate, so it stands to reason. So now that's installed, we're going to go actually uh, unzip the file, which means we're going to uncompress it. And I'm not going to show you the password, so I'm going to go to my email on my other screen and check, because I do not want to get into uh, trouble with the Zorn police. All right, let me blow that up, because I'm blind. After years and years of uh, looking at computer screens, I can't see worth a crap. So now we're going to actually open up the, um, unzip, uncompress the file. Go up to the next level. And there's the zip file. Let me see if I can do that a little bit better. So you all can see better instead of trying to look at the bottom of the screen. Uh, size. <sighs> configure column show hidden. Files. What am I missing here? All right. Hmm. Something's not right. Oh. Duh. There we go. So I got the um, Zorin OS 9 Ultimate 7-zip file. I'm going to right-click on it, and I'm going to open it with the Archive Manager. Now you see I get a password right here. Yeah, let's see. Okay, good. Now we're going to put in the password, so... Seven, six, two, three. Yep, didn't type it in correctly. What am I doing wrong? Okay, there we go. So the, put the password in and now I'm going to extract it. So we're going to extract. 
Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder. And I'm going to save it in this folder. So just to show you how it's done, and hopefully you guys will get a better idea on how to walk through this. Now it's extracting the um, Zorin OS9 Ultimate zip file, which has the ISO image in for it. And then we're going to, then I'm going to show you how to burn that image onto a USB thumb drive. If you want to do it on a DVD, you know what? Godspeed me. I'm not down with that. I'd rather just uh, pop it on a thumb drive because it makes it so much easier. And normally, what would happen is when you're um, when you're when you when you download a Linux uh, distribution, it downloads into what's called a it's it's called an ISO file, and basically it's a it's an image, it's a disk image that you would normally burn onto a disk. But the advancement of technology, you can now burn these images onto a flash drive, and you wouldn't have to go through this process of putting in the password and decompressing the file. And I guess they put a password on it because they don't want someone else to get it and therefore cheat them out of money. And you know what? Normally I kind of be like, is this really necessary? But the fact that you're getting a ready to rock and roll Linux distribution that has everything you need to get started. Browser, word processing, video editing, um, watching videos, watching music, burning discs. You get a whole slew of stuff on this distro and it's packaged in... It's already pretty well themed out the gate, so for 13 bucks, I don't have a complaint about it. It's a very low price. I wish I wish they would sell stuff like Windows 8 for like 50 bucks for their Ultimate Edition, and it would be so, and people would be so much more willing to buy it. That in itself will cut down on piracy. But of course, Microsoft is greedy, and they do what they do. Is this thing going? This thing's taking a minute to the um, to extract. Well, it did on Windows too. And to be fair, I I have a pretty decent uh, CPU on my machine. And I also have 16 gigs of RAM on it too, so it should be going a little bit faster. I hope it isn't stuck. Well, here, let's see what's going on with this. All right, it's still extracting. If you heard that noise, I live on a busy street and a big, a big truck just went by. And it gets really, trust me, it gets really bad when a, when an ambulance comes roaring by here. And that's like a three or four time a day event. So, okay, there it goes. It's extracting slowly. I'm sorry about this. It's just taking its sweet, uh, sweet time uh, extracting onto my, um, into my directory. So bear with me. And I don't think, I don't know if I've already mentioned it, but I'm doing this video... Because uh, someone a uh, someone asked me for some help, and um, her name was Karen Rose, and she was very uh, she's very nice about it. Um, she's very nice about it, and so I'm trying to help her out and maybe help some other people out. And you know the thing is, you got to remember when doing this stuff, you got to quit telling yourself, "I have a hard time." Uh, you know, I'm not very computer literate. Quit saying those negative messages. That just reinforce that I'm not computer literate. I can't do this. It's too much for me. Stop that. Just take your time. If you have to walk through this a couple of times, then do it. Because when I was starting out with doing computer work over 20 years ago, actually, wow, it's been 22 years ago. 23 actually, if you count the court, the the pre course before I actually took my first computer course or computer repair course, and. I had this old Radio Shack computer that didn't even have a hard drive in it. I mean, this thing was was so damn pathetic that I I was running it off of um, two uh, two floppy drives, and I would screw that thing up regularly when I was just starting out. And I had to go back and reinstall stuff. And then I got my first um, DOS PC, and I had to I had to go through the same process. And it's taken me a long time to get to this place. And I wouldn't even call myself Mr. IT guy. I'm a, at this point, I don't do computer professionally anymore. I'm more of a shade tree computer tech. And it's tracked it successfully. So 
the the moral of the story is just stick with it. Just keep on keeping on. If you have to repeat through it, uh, I know with Zorin OS 9 Ultimate, you get premium support, so don't be afraid to use the link in the email and go and um go and uh what am I trying to say? Go and ask for some help. All right, so you know you're not the only one out there that's doing the stuff for the first time. Just stick with it and keep it up, and you'll be fine. So now what we're gonna do since I've um since I've uh, uncompressed the ISO file, which is right here. You know, it's a CD raw CD image file. We're gonna now download and go. Let's go through the list here. Uh, we're gonna now download um, UNet booting for uh, Linux. So let me scroll down to that, and this is the next step for doing it. If you're using a Linux box, you know, I'll get around to doing a Windows uh, demonstration of this. Um, it's just that the screen reader software that Windows has is a little bit uh, is not as good as the. Um, screencaster software that Linux comes with. Like, I'm using Vocal Screen and it's free. And aside from some audio issues I've had with it, and I've gotten it working, cross my fingers, it's much better. And the fact that Linux runs on, um, doesn't take as much as Windows to run on is also a big selling point. So, let me quit, uh, babbling and let me, um, let me download, a uh, download, a uh, UNet booting. So we're going to go to the Software Center and we're going to go to Unit booting and see if we got it. There we go. All right, let's do this thing. Oh, come on, there we go. Install, damn it. All right, let me put in my password. And unit booting is installed. And as you can see, I got a um, docky installed. And I really like docky, to be perfectly honest with you. So, um, scroll up from here. And let's see if this is done yet. Okay, it is done. So let me close this out. We're going to go, and yeah, I think it will be in System Tools. And I was correct, and we're going to drop it down in my uh, my dock bar here. Oh, you son of a... All right, minimize, minimize. And let me... At, sometimes you got to get, the, with docking, sometimes you got to do this little trick of putting the icon on the desktop first before dropping it into the, um, into the dock bar. Yeah, so let's see how we how we're doing there. Nope. All right, come on, you son of a gun. There we go. And now let's open it up. And let's get the Kraken. And it's asking me for my password. And before I put my password, in, I'm going to install my thumb drive. And we're going to let it mount and do its thing. There it is. All right. So. All right, we're good. Now let's close this up. Let's drag this over here, maximize, and we're gonna just follow the directions. So at the bottom of the screen, if you can see, uh, there's a thing that says this image, and there's the little extension by it. You're gonna click that. You're gonna bubble that in, and then we're gonna browse for the um, this image. And there's a disk image we want to use. Actually, we're going to back up one step, which I like to do myself, just as a personal, um, as a personal thing to make sure that it that the image is burnt uh, successfully onto the thumb drive, and just to make it a nice clean operation. We're going to go to System Tools, and we're going to use um, oh administration, G part it. And when you use this program, be very careful because you could screw up your install. All right, so we're going to maximize that. We're going to look for the thumb drive, and we're going to go to. It's going to for me. It's going to be slash uh, dev sdd, and we're going to right click. What, am I, what do I want to do here? Dash flies unmount the drive, and then we're going to delete the partition. Then we're going to check that. All right, close, new, primary partition. We're going to make it a FAT32 partition. We're going to click Add. And we're going to format to FAT32. 
And here's the nice thing I like about a G part as opposed to the um, Windows Disk Manager is that when you do something like this in the Windows Disk Manager, it's a step-by-step -step process. So you got to delete the partition, check it, remake the partition, check it off, format it, check it off. With this, you could do all those operations, then you hit the green check button, and you ask if you want to apply it, you apply it, and guess what? It's applying all the operations at one time. So there's not a lot of rinse and repeat with this, and it's you know very logical and systematic for me. So we're done with that. Um, we're going to close this out. We're going to get back to the desktop. And we're going to, oh. Yeah, that's what we need to do. So I'm just going to zoink. And I'm going to plug the drive back in. So I've just mounted a clean, empty USB thumb drive. And now we're going to flash a... Um, we're going to flash Zorin OS 9 Ultimate onto it. And we already have it set up. We already have the USB drive. We're good. Da, 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 da. Let's open and see what happens. And let's, uh, let's start. Let's cook. Here we go. We're flashing it to the drive. And if you really need me to, I guess I could do a tutorial on how to um, flash a... ISO onto a DVD, but like I said, with the availability and um, and inexpensiveness of a um, of USB thumb drives, it's just better to flash one of these things to a USB thumb drive than take a risk and use a DVD disc. You could also buy the Zorin um, the Zorin install on a DVD disc, and they will mail it to you. It'll cost a little more, but if that something you want to do then have at it me I just rather drop it onto a um, thumb drive like I said a million times before and I'm sorry for repeating myself so much so this thing's doing its business the thumb drive is flashing so I know it's installing Anyway, Karen, once the thumb drive is, uh, once, once this is set up and it's flashed to the thumb drive, we're going to check to make sure the actual, uh, distribution is on there. And at that point, I'd urge you to back up any of your data files, you know, leave the, you know, do the proper settings to make sure the thumb drive shows up in your BIOS as, a uh, as the bootable disk and then go from there. I hope this helps. Uh, ho helps Karen out and anybody else that might be watching this video. Uh, I once again apologize if I was too much of a spaz or if I went too fast. It's the first time I'm doing one of these tutorial videos, so this is uncharted territory for me. <sighs> for some reason, UNet boot takes a while to um, do this. Whereas a uh, universal USB installer, which I have on my Windows drive, seems to be a little seems to be a little bit faster. All right. All right. Well, if you're watching this video, it might be a good time for you to get up and um, get a drink or use the restroom or something like that because it's a uh, taking its uh, sweet time. And well, and to be fair, this is a pretty big ISO file. This is like a even with it, even with it zipped, it's like 3.6 gigabytes. So there's a lot of stuff on a, on this um, distribution, which can be a good thing or bad thing depending on your perspective. If you're someone that wants a minimalistic, very small ISO image to install off of, boot high Linux or um, actually Ubuntu 14.40 uh, itself would be a good bet. 
But then on the other, on the flip side of that, you're responsible for theming, installing your programs, getting everything set up and tweaked so you can get it the way you want want it to look. And if that's something you're into, hey man, you know what? Knock yourself out and have a blast. Uh, I'm currently enjoying Zorin OS 9 Ultimate Edition. I really like it. Um, one of these days, if I can ever concentrate enough to learn how to script and configure files, I might do an Arch install and give that a shot and see if I can actually you know, muster the intellectual um, energy to uh, perform such a task like that. So... And I'll say this much, and you know, I sh maybe should just quit running my mouth and let the damn uh, file and compressors out. I'm really grateful for the fact that uh, I learned how to uh, fix, you know, fix and build computers back in 19. Well, actually, starting in 1991 when I got out of the military, and uh, you know, I did it professionally for seven years. I got sick, stuff came up, and I don't think I'll do it professionally again. Though I wouldn't mind uh, doing a side business fixing old computers up and selling them on Craigslist or eBay or something like that to starving students and people who otherwise couldn't afford a brand spanking new computer or laptop for that matter.
Well, it looks like this thing isn't going to stall. Something got stuck or something, so I'm going to close it out and try one more time. And, uh... So let's try this one more time and let's go back to square one and redo the um, redo this thing and see what happens. So I'm sorry about that and I'm sorry this video is going on longer than it should be. Um, but you, I think you get the idea about setting up the um, you know redoing the uh, the thumb drive, you know, getting all the old gunk out of it so you can do a nice clean install. So I'm going to give this one more try, and then I promise I won't bore you anymore with it. Unmount. Alright, delete. New. Format to apply. All right, that's done. Let's go back to UNet booting. Put in the password. Let's disiso. Let's. Oh yeah, that would help. Do a shortcut, do a little shortcut on that. There we go. All right, now it's mounted. It. All right, it appears that this is this is the big file that it's getting stuck on. So I'm gonna break this video off, but you get the idea. What I'll do is I'll install the um, I'll send I'll put in a link for uh, the install guy once you burn the CD or DVD or burn it onto a thumb drive, and it'll show you how to uh, get into your BIOS and change your BIOS settings so you can boot into that particular medium. I'm really sorry about that it took so long. Um, I hope this 